That's right, y'all. Back like dope boys after the cops just cleared the block. Deepest dive dialogue unlimited. He is the dive instructor. I am the splash specialist. And we got that shit to go deep one more again for ya. Live and direct from an underscore. I don't shoot ready. You better get ready. Because we don't demonstrate, we penetrate. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. What's going on with it, man? Man, listen. It's been a long time coming, but that change is here. Yeah, buddy. Like I said, we back like dope boys after the cops didn't clear the block. That's right. It's safe to come back outside. Indeed, indeed. Well, not for everybody, because uh, the only well, outside they're going to see is the yard <laughs> for an hour. They're going to stomp the yard. Well, stomp, maybe, but maybe not the yard. Maybe not the yard. True, indeed. Well, I mean, shoot, it's rough out here, man. You know what I'm saying? It's real rough. We're going to talk about that later. I mean, right now. Again, it's it really ain't that safe to go outside because uh this economy sucks, sucks majorly. It you know what I'm saying? And it's to the point where uh what did that one brother say? The rent is too damn high. Facts too damn high, man. Sky high. Sky high, ain't that what good mom used to say? Sky high, that's right. Yeah, sky touch high. I never touched before, seen what seen I never what I never seen before. before. Woke up, yeah. seen the prices sky high, high as giraffe ass. You know what I'm saying? But shoot, high as eagle you know? tail. And I mean, shoot, they gonna keep jacking the prices up. Unless somebody does something about it. And uh, mm -hmm. some parts of this world they have. Uh, Drake's home country, in a matter of fact. Canada. What are you talking they about? Said, what are you talking about? They said, we're not going to take it anymore. <laughs> they sure did. Oh man, so uh I paying bills and everything, didn't they? Yeah, basically. Shoot. I ain't mad at them. I mean, shoot. You stick together, you can uh make a difference, you know what I'm saying? A big difference. You know what I'm saying? What did what did Big Mama say? Mm -hmm. Come together, you can make a fist. You can make a mighty blow. Yeah, strike a mighty blow. Man, I really hope she wasn't talking about dope. I don't think she was, but <laughs> that I'm just saying. But yeah, man, shoot. Again, you can only you can only let somebody do. You can only do it. Let somebody gonna do what you gonna let them do. You know what I'm saying? After you. You're like, yeah, I'm not gonna, you ain't gonna do this to me no more. You start to take actions. Enough people start to take actions, you know what I'm saying? There really ain't much that you can do, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, they stop paying bills. They're like, you know what? What you gonna do? Facts. If, if, if you shut all of us down, if you shut the all of the power off, you ain't gonna get no profits. And then what? Facts. So I mean, yeah, bro, it's it's, it's wild and it's very wild, man. I mean, you know, you ever think like the market will bear what the consumer is willing to endure? You know what I'm saying? All right. It's, it, you know, we could blame it on politicians, and I'm sure that they're positive there have a hand in it but ultimately it's because of the special interest of these corporations 
So, you know, some of the onus and even some of the obligation is on us to push for that change in certain ways. Yeah. You know what I mean? So what are we going to do about it, y'all? Like, share, and subscribe. You know, comment. Just be kind because we do rewind. And I mean, the thing, I mean, shoot, you you don't have to be kind because, again, like you said, we rewind. And if you if we rewind and see that you ain't kind, once you rewind, clap back. But again, like you were saying, I mean, if enough people make a cause for change, and then you know how people say, "Oh well, well, what what we do is it going to make a difference?" Uh, remember the GameStop stock. That's proof right there that you can make a difference. Enough people, you know what I'm saying? So it can be done. That's realness. It definitely can be done. Sorry, I was having a little bit of an audio problem. Let me see if it's fixed. Can you hear you all right excellent here we go again it's back on now Ah, the economy is 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 at the time, uh, at this current time, the uh, elections coming up, and we have this news with the diddler. So let's let's you know, hey, let's. Where do we begin? There's so much to talk about. So much to talk about. You know, while while all this is going on. Um, you know, one thing that I came across, uh, I'm going to share my screen here just so we can touch on this. I'm going to go to Reuters News. Reuters News, here we go. So, Blackstone to acquire Ancestry.com for $4.7 billion. Now this this story, I guess, is this is a over a month old. Yeah, over a month old. Um so you, you familiar with this, bro? Yeah, and I got a problem with the name of the people called Blackstone. They already gonna put that on us. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> So apparently, Blackstone Group Incorporated said on Wednesday it agreed to acquire genealogy provider Ancestry.com, Inc., from private equity rivals for $4.7 billion, which uh, has, what's it, 3.5 billion pounds, uh, including debt, placing a big bet on family tree chasing as well as personalized medicine. Ancestry.com is the world's largest provider of DNA services, allowing customers to trace their genealogy and identity, identify, sorry, genetic health risks with tests sent to their home. Blackstone is hoping that more consumers staying at home amid the COVID-19 pandemic will turn to Ancestry.com for its services. We believe Ancestry has significant runway for further growth as people of all ages and backgrounds become increasingly interested in learning more about their family histories and themselves. David Kestnebaum, a Blackstone senior managing director said in his statement, the deal is Blackstone's first acquisition 
out of Blackstone Capital Partners, uh, eight, the largest ever private equity fund that raised $26 billion from investors last year. What in the? Ancestry.com has more than 3 million paying customers in about 30 countries and earns more than $1 billion in annual revenue. Launched in 1996 as a family history website, it harnessed advances in DNA testing and mobile app phone apps in the following two decades to expand its offerings. Blackstone is buying Ancestry.com from private equity firms Silver Lake, Spectrum Equity and uh, Premira, Singapore's Sovereign Wealth Fund, GIC. Uh, another Ancestry.com investor said it will continue to maintain a significant minority stake in the company. Did you catch the that? It's a minority. Did you catch that? Hey. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I got a problem with all this. What's your problem with it? Okay, now this is just my opinion. I already think that this whole Ancestry.com and 23andMe and all this stuff is just some type of way to... Uh, I think it's another form of entrapment if you, really, if you really want to be honest. I think that... What type of entra entrapment? Niggas, man. Niggas. Huh? Well, think about it. What? Let me just break it. Let me just break it down for people in the back. Okay, so being that as though people of our hue are like the only people who really don't know what our true background and heritage is as of where we come from, because I mean. I mean, but clearly, brother, we came from West Africa, just like we were told. Now from Crenshaw Mafia. <laughs> Careful now. <laughs> Careful now. What's the rest of that line? Bruh. Bruh. Like, seriously, like, black folk is the only ones who really, truly don't know where they exactly come from. Supposedly, we come from West Africa. Supposedly. Supposedly, oh, you know what I'm saying? But anybody else, you can trace them back to their old, you can trace them back to their roots, down to the country, down to the region of the country, hell, down to possibly the daggone block that they people then came from. It's just us, you know what I'm saying? And then with the DNA, there's gonna be they're gonna say, oh well, you're related to so and so, and so and so has a criminal record, and they've probably violated their parole and blah say this, blah say that. To me, this all ties in with that facial recognition, which also ties into AI, which is gonna somehow be able to alter DNA in some type of way sometime soon, which is gonna further fuck shit up for people. For no apparent reason, just cause if you got a grudge against somebody or you don't like the cut of somebody's jib, you can fudge up their stuff from something that they have in the daggone 23andMe or uh, Ancestry.com pool that in the system now. Nah, bro, I'm good. Hmm. <laughs> I don't trust that shit. Well, you know, I like your perspective. I like that it's different than, than mine to an extent. You, you're, I agree with you on that. We are the only group of people, uh, so-called Black Americans, also misnomered African Americans, um, also mistaken for people of color, even though that pertains to other people of other hue designation from other nationalities or well, countries of origin, if you will. Uh, right. But as we're finding out, a lot of us are doing our own genealogical history through records. And what these DNA companies have done is a travesty. 
uh, I remember a, a 60 Minutes interview uh, segment um, years ago with Dr. Rick Kittles for uh, AfricanAncestry.com. And not to pick on him because he was he was being quite transparent and honest to a point once he was put on the uh, hot seat in questioning about the accuracy. When you have a 0.03% accuracy rate and each of these companies only have genetic databases from certain countries and certain ethnic groups within those countries. So what they're doing is limited to say the least. Um, and, and when you get the results, they're mainly for uh, what you would call entertainment purposes, uh, you could say, in a in manner of speaking. Um, man, I found out some things I didn't didn't really particularly think I would find. Uh, a cousin of mine is more involved with it um, currently, but we talk just about every day. Um, I, I thank him. Shout out to David, cousin David. Um, he's reached out to another cousin of ours that actually professionally does these genealogical searches. Um, and so, you know, just to give you an example, if you have to send a photograph with your DNA sample, I can guarantee you that if you go to another company that doesn't ask you to submit some type of rendering of your current uh, appearance, you're going to get different results. And they're, I mean, when I say different, I mean drastically different, like on an impossible level different. Bruh, if you got to send a photo with DNA results, go back to our first ever episode of this. It's a scam. Just saying, bro. All right. Can't trust it. Cannot trust that shit. You're going to start getting all type of wild emails about some bull that ain't got nothing to do with nothing. Like you said, entertainment purposes only. Well, they about to entertain you and get stuff for the purpose of your entertainment because you just got played, brother. Insert your ATM card in there right now because they about to drain your shit ASAP. Just saying. Good point. Very good point. Uh, and shoot, but hold up, not to cut you, but shoot, there's a, there, I just, there could be a way to fix this too. I mean, shoot, if you can, shoot, scam them like they scamming you. If you have a dog, give them some of the dog saliva and a fake picture of somebody else. Send it in, see what they say. If that shit say you from somewhere in, oh, let's just say Newfoundland, not Newfoundland, somewhere in Greenland or Iceland, you know it's a lie. Mm, good point. You got a Siberian Husky. Stop it. Bear with me one second. Mm. I have a technical you issue. Good. I thought I had them resolved, but let's see. You can continue on, my brother. Let's see. Yeah. I'm just saying, man. I that like all this, and again, bro. Like we was like I was gonna say in the other uh, segment that we was talking about how uh, people we the only ones that don't stick together and everything. Well, yeah, that's a group of us that do stick together, and they're called corporations. It's wild because corporations only stick together for two things. The first, survival. Right. The second, greed. Tell me what I'm lying. You are Just not. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? The first is always survival. Then once they see that they can survive, then they say, oh, well, let's see if we can do this. And then that turns into greed. Indeed. Indeed. I mean, so, I mean, 
I, I want to take a look further into what what is Blackstone, right? Blackstone. And I really hope it ain't the Blackstone that's that that make them cooking surfaces. Oh man, that's funny. Um, yeah, not to be confused with Black Rock, y'all, because I I was at first I was like, wait a minute, is Black Rock? I thought. Mm -hmm. it was Black Rock. Funny. So it looks like they're an investment group. Just say what they invest in or just an investment group. Multi asset investing. Uh let's see. Um wow. They have eighty one billion dollars in assets that they manage. Hmm. So let's see, private wealth solutions they offer. Um ad financial advice, insurance. They're the largest alternative asset manager with more than one trillion in AUM. It says they serve institutional and individual investors by building strong businesses that deliver lasting value. With 12,400 real estate assets and 230 plus portfolio companies, it enables them to invest in dynamic sectors positioned for long-term growth. So, uh, yeah, man, that's, that's what they do. They are, they deal with it. They're an event. Nice. Yeah. Sorry about that, y'all. And I'm back. So, Ancestry.com. Another interesting news. Uh 23 and me. You heard about that situation. That's what you was well, that's what you were saying earlier, right? They said it was going public. Yeah. Um, so let me pull that up. I think I have it here in our chat. Probably the quickest way to link to it. Trying to see where did I send that? When did I send that to you? All right. Yeah. So twenty three and me. I know that they had a mass of of re resignations. Oh. Um. You said awful. <laughs> awful man. Mm. Dog on it. Sorry, all for the silence. Uh, so yeah, where'd the story go? So it looks like there was a breach at some point. Hmm. And let's see. Check out the resignations here. Yeah, so in response to CEO Ann 
Wos Wosikis pushed to take the company private. Sorry, they didn't go public. They were trying to go private. Let's see. The resignation, this is as of September 17th, states that they haven't seen progress on an actionable, actionable plan for taking the company private that benefits all of the shareholders. Awful. So, if I can find the article, bear with me a second. So, seven members of the board decided to resign because they didn't see a mutual interest in the move of them taking the company private. If I could find that article, y'all, there's an article that gives further explanation into what that CEO's, uh, what, what, what she stands to gain by making this move and what her goal in making this move is. All right, so that's still wild though to me. Like you want to, you was public, and now you want to go private. Mm -hmm. And your job is collecting DNA samples. Pretty much. Absolutely. So, okay. Seven independent directors of Legacy DNA Testing Company, also known. 23andMe have resigned from its board. Dude, it's in the name. 23, take the and out me. They about to clone niggas. Mm, think so. Make, make 23 of them. So, Wasiki is 23andMe's sole remaining board member. Huh. In a letter to Wasiki, the directors cited offering differing views on the strategic direction for the company going forward and concerns over the CEO's concentrated voting power. Back in April, Wasiki signaled her, her intention to take 23andMe private. A spe special committee formed by the company rejected that proposal. Despite the rejection, Wasiki believes taking 23andMe private is still the best course of action for the company. This is why where the board and CEO reached an impasse. She controls 49% of 23andMe votes, giving her a degree of control that makes board members shopping the company to potential bidders nearly impossible. Wow. So they can't even sell it unless she agrees to it. So, wow. They reached a, a peak $6 billion dollars valuation after going public in 2021 but since has struggled to find viable a viable business model well it's partially because y'all scamming people but you know that's my opinion uh yeah so blackstone acquires ancestry.com and 23 and me is going private minus seven board members. Yeah, I know how that's gonna work. I like way to see Blackstone acquiring 23 and me next. You read my mind. Making it a big ass conglomerate. Yeah. yeah yep. Uh, you read my mind. That's crazy, bro. So what's going what's going on with everybody's, you know, DNA data? What's what's going to happen? Alt, remember remember that game when uh oh uh, shoot. What was that? Was it the Genesis? This Sega, or was it just Sega? 
Remember that game, Altered Beasts? Yeah, I remember that. That's what we about to have. So you think this is connected to the whole uh, them cloning and then also experimenting with the hybrid human yeah. animal? Uh, it's, about to be a bunch, it's about to be a bunch of altered beasts <laughs> out here doing some wild ass shit. Altered beasts. Yeah, man, I remember that game. And that's what it's about to be. Altered beasts. Interestingly enough, uh, T and I were doing a Beyond the Veil so uh, a few weeks ago, and one of the the topic one of the topics were cryptids. So hybrids would fall under cryptids. They're like uh, mythological creatures that possibly stem from someone's imagination or their uh, yeah their imagination or some other realm of uh, mythological uh, perception that become a part of human reality based upon experience. So Bruh, yeah, you about to have a whole bunch of altered beasts. Trust me. <laughs> I don't want to think about that, but yeah, man, I already am. I'll be obviously this is the second time it's come up and like I said a month or so. So you know we've reported on you know the Republican Party killing a bill that they were trying to pass in the House, what, about two, three years ago? And China had already given their approval. Japan was already, uh, you know, working on human-animal hybrid, create, you know, manifestations, creations, whatever. Um, but, yeah, man, it's getting wild, wilder by the day. And DNA going to stand for damn, not again. Good one, good one. Just yeah, saying. I can't disagree with you on that. Yeah, man. Join us on rumble.com, you know, Deeper Dives Unlimited, Deeper Dives Dialogue Unlimited channel. You know, join our, our locals. Join our locals, you know, subscribe, donate, comment, like, share, criticize, analyze, join in the fun, man. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Yeah. Yeah, man. And all that. And speaking of damn, not again, your man Diddy. Mm. Puffy, whatever the freak they calling him now. Dirty money. Oh, my bad. Yeah, man, Diddy. I mean, what's happening? What, what, I mean, crazy was developed so far uh there's names being uh brought out from what the videos bruh i'm just gonna say this why the hell ain't there a goddamn baby oil shortage caused by the diddler himself and his clients or between guests. him and between him and Tyler Perry, how ain't there a damn baby oil shortage? Oh, you put Tyler up in there. Okay. Um, Bro, you remember that damn Boondocks episode? Mm. Which Tyler? Tyler the creator or Tyler Perry? <laughs> Perry, bro. I ain't going to. Same difference. Same difference. Same nigga. <laughs> oh, no, just kidding. <laughs> Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. You know, how, mu how much oil did they find again? Dude, they said it was like, I want to say a thousand bottles, legit. Just at that one residence. Wow. And the fucked up part is I used to have a running joke that I was going to get like leather couches and just put baby oil all over them and just jump on them and slide and fuck bitches on them. Not anymore. I mean, this was like 20, 10, 10 years ago. Not anymore. Yeah. You can kill that one. You might bust a kneecap or a hip or something. That part. Either way, take your pick. But yeah, wow, man. 
I saw some funny memes and videos, uh, AI videos people did. Uh, they said this is the cops going into Diddy's place, and they showed uh, the scene from uh, Home Alone where he <laughs> dude is squirted. Uh, what did he put on the floor in that movie? Was it? Uh, it was glue, I think. Was it? I think he put something else slippery first. Yeah, it was yeah, some slippery. Yeah. But yeah, man, that's pretty funny. Pretty funny, but disturbing with the thousand bottles. Bruh. Johnson's and Johnson baby oil. Just I hope yeah. he has some. I hope he has stock in that company. He should have buying that much of it. That part. That's wow. But yeah. <laughs> Dude, like with everything that's transpiring and all that, and like I was listening to this on the on the Ed Lover Come On Son podcast, and they was he was saying, well, like I don't want to say that Cat Williams predicted this. He was like, I'm not saying he was wrong. He was like, but shoot, if you think about it. Jaguar Wright was the one who called this, and then y'all called her crazy. It was like, she ain't all that crazy, bro. She was dead on with what she was saying, like, and y'all tried to call her crazy. Nah, bro, she ain't crazy. And if you really think about it, was this dude snitching on himself this whole time with some of the titles of some of these groups that he had? It's that dirty money. I mean, come on, son. Like, for real. And then look at that cologne that he had everybody out there purchasing. Unforgivable. Unforgivable. Bruh, it was to you. It was out there in your face. In your face. Bruh. Hold up. I mean, the the biggie verse. You look so good, uh. I haven't even said the rest. Yeah, say the rest. Say the rest. Just say the rest. I'm not going to say the rest because it's very pause worthy. Edit, edit it. Just I mean, I mean, it's go back to the song, Me and My Bitch. That's all I'm going to say. I mean, shoot, you go to two, was it 2000? 2099, Black Rob, thinking that nigga asshole, like, whoa. Could that have been a freak off episode? I mean, allegedly, of course it. Allegedly. But bruh, hold, but hold Down up though. I'm like, think about it. Real talk. Could the voter die shit have been some type of weird confession? That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> In some way, at least, at least on some of my social media platforms, I've like, shared bruh. some articles. I think people should find interesting and noteworthy. You know, he formed the Black Party, right? What was the Black Party about? You once you was he was supporting Biden. He used to be tight with Trump, or at least real cool with Trump. Let's put it that way. Well, it's, I mean, Trump bro. showed up at a couple of Diddy parties, which is not unusual. Yeah, but you know. I mean, bro, I, I met dude. He could possibly be in at least one of them freak off tapes. Who? Which one? Which one are we talking? Trump could possibly be in one of them freak off tapes, bro. Oh, you went to that side. Okay, okay. He could be. I'm just saying. Allegedly. You know, I don't think he'd be sloppy enough. Um, the only reason I say that is the only reason he got 34 felonies is mm -hmm. because in that very same state, he tried to pay off. You know the the adult film star that he had an affair with during uh, which time he had already started running for a president. So if he had done that at any other point, it would not have been anything that would be considered criminal per se. But in that particular state, because of the laws, especially. Uh, but you got a point. You do have a point. I won't. I won't dismiss what you're saying. But that that'd be very interesting to find out. 
And bro, very, very interesting to find out. The Cassie song, I know this can be love. It can't be if you beating her ass in the hotel lot in the hotel hallway. Man, that's just so that story's so tragic. Basically. And Man. I mean my thing is this too. They was always saying, <coughs> oh, like, them Diddy parties is the shit. Well, now it's, yeah, they fun, but I leave before everything went down. Yeah, right, right. How the story's changing now, bro. I mean, because now that everything is coming out that he was watching stuff and had tapes of everything and all that stuff, but... Well, I mean, you know, Kamala Harris did used to date uh, Montel Williams. I don't think that Montel was into the Diddy parties per se, but you know, rumor rumor has expressed that she's the queen of the Kama Sutra. Yeah, but to me, that dude was cool. that, the premise of his show was corny. That nigga was always trying to catch a nigga creeping. Well, right. yeah, well, we've got evidence of you trying to cheat. And then he got caught creeping. So fuck out of here with that bullshit. I mean, Stop it, bro. don't hate, bro, because, I mean, cheaters, there's a lot of shows that came behind him with the same format or similar format and blew up off of that. You know? I'm not yeah. saying that it wasn't, but the thing is, how how is that what your show is based on, and yet you doing that shit? How ironic! Doesn't art often imitate life? No, yeah, but again, yeah. like I said, yeah. greed, and that's the exact reason why he, you, the man is in this position that he in now. I lightweight think it's a conspiracy theory. Because mm. he bit the hand that fed him, you know what I'm saying? And then once he saw that, <clears throat> well, they're making all this money off of me, and mm. I'm not really making any money. Well, now I see what it feels like to be one of the artists that I used to deal with, allegedly. And it was like, well, uh, listen here, buddy, you might want to relax on that. Well, no, I'm just going to leave. Uh, Cassie, so uh, you still want to do what you was going to do? Okay, cool. Next day, lawsuit. Oh, man, I hear you. I hear you. But <sighs> there's some things that can't be ignored, man, like. That whole situation with Cassie, like that, that stunk to high hell. Like she oh, comes, no. she comes in the door with Ryan Leslie. The only music to speak of that she had recorded was with Ryan Leslie. It was Ryan Leslie's music. Um, and if you see some of the clips from interactions that were recorded on video when she first came into Diddy's presence via Ryan Leslie. Ryan Leslie is present, and Diddy's making some really awkward, bold um, commentary, along with making offers to her um, in these meetings. And then, you know, skip skip from that. Let me go to a more serious, more serious topic within this topic, which is the lawsuit that she filed was it read like an indictment when you file a lawsuit it's normally it's the language and everything is civil the way that she presented it let me know this that wasn't the end of it and not only was it suspect that he settled with her within 48 hours for a supposed allegedly undisclosed amount of money uh I, I can't use the Diageo company as a scapegoat here for conspiracy. I mean, I know there are plenty of other people who see the correlation, but all I see is that they were maybe a barrier of protection that he pissed off. 
you know what I'm saying, that would cause them to remove that hedge from around him and make it easier. But I think he cooked his own goose all along the way. I mean, we're talking about racketeering, trafficking. Keefe D just got arrested and locked up in what, June? Yeah. This ain't looking good on many fronts. Yeah, I feel what you're saying, but the reason why I'm saying that it's a conspiracy theory with Diageo was because that lawyer with Cassie's bread, how was she going to afford that lawyer? The proceeds from the winning of a lawsuit that they knew would never see the light of day in court. I'm my way of thinking is though the fact that she, that they backed that they was the ones that funded that is what I'm saying. Oh, no, I get what you're saying. Okay, so for the audience, yeah, you you catch this later. Yeah, that's that's what I'm yeah. saying is that they not the fact that oh well they're just like pulling the strings. No, like basically they funded that shit. You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, think about it. When you have so <laughs> much wealth, who actually deals with money? I was just having this conversation with uh, a, a friend of mine yesterday, and I was saying to him, in fact, it was this morning, not yesterday, excuse me. I was watching an interview of Elon Musk, and I was sharing him, sharing with him the contents of the interview, paraphrasing, of course, because I don't remember it verbatim, but essentially, Elon Musk gets paid in stock options, which are not taxable. Mm -hmm. If he needs cash to make a major purchase, he borrows it, which is a loan, which is also not taxable. So in order to cover the cost of the loan and the interest from taking loans, he can cash in the stock options with the institution that's issuing the loan. I don't know that they funded it, but I definitely would say they refunded probably referred her vicariously through a source that's mutually connected being that they are the are they the largest liquor company in the world bro listen they got they got to be they have at least bro they got at least 5 vodkas they own Smirnoff i know they own Hennessy oh it's a wrap yeah, so no, they own they own Louis Vuitton, bro. They own Verve Clico. They own all that shit. Okay, so let me just let me not retract, but let me dial it back a bit. I I can see not only what you're saying as as a possibility, but I definitely concur. There's a likelihood that they had some involvement with her being uh, represented by that person. Or the firm and the person that was at the firm. I mean, when you have that many lines of business in the same marketplace, um, yeah, you would definitely have all kinds of a protectionary uh, <laughs> safeguards and lawyers on tap. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, who's to say that she didn't meet? these people long before this developed along the way uh but that would you know wow so that's wow mm -mm. and the thing is like you you're not the first person that i've heard say that like the case sounded doesn't sound like a um indictment yeah you're not the yeah, first not person like I heard it say that. wasn't like a civil filing reads normally at all Right, 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 and uh, I, I want to get the, the lawyer's name right, but her last name is Shabazz. Um, I've seen her on various platforms, but where I first came to be familiar with her was through a, a guy named Sonetter, he had a platform called Sonetter TV, and then another one was Black News 102. And uh, he had her come on to discuss people's filings from different communities, such as like some of the Moorish communities that were trying to claim sovereignty of some sort. 
you know, she's one of the, the people that I, I came to start paying attention when she spoke publicly about these topics because she can steer you clear of a lot of falsehood. You know, now there are certain lawyers that I've come across on that topic and others that will mislead you or misrepresent the truth, state facts, nonetheless, but mis miseducate you from a truth standpoint uh, to discourage you from, you know, looking into certain things uh, to liberate yourself from various types of bondage in our system. But I digress on that back to the original topic. But yeah, um, it read like a federal indictment. So I knew charges were coming behind this. Oh, no doubt. I mean, it's just, it's, bro, I'm just, and I'm not saying I really want to see because I really don't, but I'm just like, yo, who all else is going to be named in this shit? You know well, what I'm you, saying? You mentioned to me Eric Adams. Yeah. <laughs> Hold up. Because I want to say I just got another uh, another update. It's 50 Cent reacts to Eric Adams' indictment. Shares video of him. 50, shares video of him giving Diddy key to the city. You want a docu series? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Check Bruh. this out. This is uh this Bruh. is a clip of Gene Deal. Uh somebody shared this out. Angry Man. Shout out to Angry Man. That's my guy. Uh what up, Beano Nation? But yo, check this out. I just want to play this little short clip. All right. This is Gene Deal. Check out what D Gene has to say on this clip. All this is bigger than Diddy. It's bigger than Diddy, bro. Because you know who else they was doing investigation on during that whole time period? It was the mayor and the politicians in New York City. Oh, what did he say? They turned around, give him the city, the key to the city. All the mayor people that he brought, it was the mayor and the politicians in New York City. It was the mayor and the politicians in New York City. Every, every, every. During that whole time period, it was the mayor and the politicians in New York City. Who? It was the mayor and the politicians in New York City. All right, then. They Yo, and I'll give him the city, the key to the city. What's up? That just brought me back. When you first sent me this and I watched it, it brought me back to something. Okay. Think about it, bro. And this has, what I'm about to say has nothing to do with this specific case, but it kind of does if you think about it. <clears throat> And okay. how and and how like they'll build a case on you. Mm. Think about it. What are the two best TV shows that HBO ever produced? Dexter. Okay, we maybe. Weeds? No, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm in my Sopranos, Sopranos and Sopranos. The Wire, my brother. The Wire, for sure. For sure. Yeah, for sure. And the sure. thing is, I legit just went in my bag and just started watching both of them, like, lately. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Now, The Wire specifically, you uh, watch, I want to say it's season four. When they start going, and we'll shoot, honestly, they start going into politics like as early as season two. Season one, actually, they start dipping into it. But you go into the later seasons, they go into that shit heavy. But you notice that uh, season three 
Stringer Bell is talking about getting out of the game and going legit. You know what I'm saying? But Avon still want them corners. And you notice, like, as you get older and you watch that stuff again, that shit hit different. You know what I'm saying? It hit a lot different. Yeah, for sure. It still hit the same, but it hit from a different perspective. So you watching it and you see Stringer Bill dealing with these politicians who basically on the same level as him. Right. They just do it from behind the desk and got the law on their side, basically. They doing it legit. And the second to last episode, when uh Stringer Bell trying to get some type of contracts done up for some permits that he trying to do for some uh building that he trying to turn into some lofts that he mm -hmm. can rent out. And uh, you know, you gotta grease palms, you know what I'm saying? Right. Grease a politician's palm. Okay, cool. Pay all your permits. Well, again, they see you as a street dude. And right. okay, he good for it. I'm gonna just take his money and keep going. But the fact that he is street dude, you can't tell on me because what you gonna do? Tell him I'm taking your money and drugs. What's well, one yeah. of my favorite Jay? It's one of my favorite Jay-Z songs ever. But anyway, mm -hmm. and if you try to come at me, I'm a politician. Right. Your goose is cooked, buddy. What are you going to do? So, I mean, there's that. But you still got these people. You still got Lester and them in that little secret location. Tapping in your phone. Oh, Stringer Bell trying to get at Clay Davis now, huh? Okay. So that's both of them that they trying to get with. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's the same with the Sopranos. You know what I'm saying? You got them doing the secret shit with the Rico and all that. So, yeah, that's how they built that case on you. They'll sit on that shit for a while until they figure out, you know, the whole thing. Follow the money. Follow where the shit going. That's how they get you. They will, And they'll sit patiently waiting for that shit. So it's time to strike. That's how they operate. And then when it's that time, boom, they're coming for everybody. No matter how small of a part or how big of a part, they're still coming after you. They got you. Mm. Wow. Good point, man. Good observation on that. Man, um, I'm going to let uh, play the rest of this clip just so... Uh, you know, we this is fair use. We do not own this clip. We didn't create this clip. This is not from our podcast, nor was it produced or otherwise created by us. But this is our reaction to what Gene Deal is saying about the Diddy Rico case. All the mayor people that he brought on here in New York City are all resigning. Mm, mm, mm. It's, they all resigning. People ain't gonna tie this together. Shout out to Angry Man. <laughs> He's hilarious. Who ain't gonna tie it together? <laughs> that shit been that shit been <clears throat> that, that shit been tied, double knotted, and hung so you can see how tied that how tight that shit been tied. Oh, we know. Yeah, let's not let's not forget. Of course, everyone probably knows now, but the record company execs that have resigned. That's some wild shit, man. I mean, shoot, but didn't Kevin Lyles resign? I believe so. Let's see. Former Warner Brothers Nashville. Now, this is last year. Let's sign this year. Let's get the up to date. Did Leo resign? Kevin Lyles. Laxman Narasimhan. Oh, that's Starbucks. I'm trying to find records. Company 
XX. Yeah. Uh, you said did Leor step down? Let me try a different search. Because you got people, you got uh, executives stepping down from companies who you wouldn't have thought of stepped down. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. You you so you said Leo, you think stepped down to? I was asking. I don't know oh. if he did or not. I was asking. I'm not sure. And then again, I don't know if he I don't think he would have. I don't know, but but the one that shocked me was the dude from Nike. So it's three CEOs for sure. Here's a list, allegedly. Let's see if it'll come up for me. Yeah, Eric Pryor of Fine Arts Music. Uh, Kevin Lyles. Jonathan Halfway. Holloway, excuse me. All right, I, you know, I can't find just the execs. So here's an interesting list somebody posted on Instagram. And uh, it's from uh, the Olaz in Olazine Network. Let's see. I don't think these are related, though. See, did people, I mean, who knows, though? Just because they're from different cities or states doesn't mean they're not connected. Let's see. Uh I want to see if I can find something better vetted, more accurate and relevant. But yeah, we could continue on on uh, talking on this topic as well because I mean, Mayor Eric, Eric Adams, how many counts did you say? Five. But to be honest, I kind of saw this coming. You know, it, with a lot of things going on simultaneously, it's it's not always safe to assume that they're all related to the same major event that we might want to automatically look at. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, but I saw this. I saw this coming when this fool did drink champs. I'm just saying. I ain't gonna hold you, bro. Dead ass. I seen this fool on drinks. Oh, this this is a wrap for this dude. Like he doing too much to me. He's doing too much stuff to be an influencer than to be yeah. a mayor. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, oh, I get to live my, I get to live out my dreams that I want to live as, I as a high schooler. You know what I'm saying? No doubt. Yeah, absolutely. Wow, man. Uh, so Nike CEO stepped down. Warner Music Japan uh, CEO stepped down. Sony Music Nashville CEO stepped down. Uh, Village Supermarket CEO stepped down. TD Bank CEO stepped down. Air Wellness or Cannabis Operator uh, CEO stepped down. Um Yeah, man. What do you think about them denying him bail, man? I mean, obviously he is. There is a high possibility of him being a flight risk. Well, of course, when they bro, when they got his when they got his sons, this dude was on a plane. So of course he's a flight risk. But uh, denying him bail. <clears throat> Yeah, I could see it because he was willing to give up too much already. Mm -hmm. You willing to give up the crib that you already plan on selling? You willing to give up your kids' passports? What is that going to do? Like you willing to put up your mom's crib, which they're going to take, like the sister, the attorney, uh, Miss Chavez. 
stated that, I mean, you offered a $50 million bond on a $50 million house that the feds are likely not only capable, let me say it that way, not only capable and not only is it likely, but inevitably going to seize from you. But it's it's just like with that, like you willing to do anything to to stay free. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah, you definitely to me, you definitely a flight risk, bro. I yeah. wouldn't trust that. Like, I think allegedly you would probably dress up like a female to to to, to stay free. Like I said, allegedly. He might. I mean, remember when he would dress up in that cur in that curly wig and do wild stuff like dancing around? Mm. Yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, several people in his circle of friends, no matter how great or small one might consider that to be, have all been known to cross-dress in films and shows and photographs, parties, etc. Let's just keep it real. Uh, but yeah, Kevin, Kevin Lyles resigned from Warner Brothers Music Group. Uh, let me see here. Some others. Um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? So several executives have stepped down, including Elliot Grange, 10K Projects founder and son of Universal Music Group chairman and CEO Lucian, whose name keeps popping up. Lucian Grange. And he has been introduced as the new CEO of Atlantic Music Group. Interesting. Allegedly, he's one of those guys that can make things happen and make things and people uh, disappear from sight. Yeah, very much a part of the Diddy saga. Definitely connected there as well. But there's there. I just know that there's definitely going to be more stories, more people to come out of the world works with this because, um, coincidentally, yeah, um, this is the 10th anniversary of Corinne Superhead Stephen's book. Oh my god, Diary of a Video Vixen, mm. and she said that in this 10th anniversary, she's going to add more to the Diddy chapter. How coincidental. Very much so. Mm. Mm. Just saying. Mm. I actually read that book. How was it? I'm talking about like recently, dude. How was it? I actually felt bad for her, and I really didn't want to going into the book, but I actually felt bad for her. How so? Because, like, she had a hard life. Who, who has it? What I read, nah, she was bad. <laughs> she was fucked, bro. Who, who has it? And then, like, the second half, second half of the book, I'm like, damn, another one? Another one? <laughs> She fucked him too? Shit. But I have forgot, dude. I legit forgot that she had a baby by uh cool G Red. That's amazing. Out of all of those seeds, that, that that's the one that attached. Or that she brought forth. Not, not, I mean, you know, big fan of cool G rap. You lose because you got the ill street. Shout out to Kooji Rap. But yeah, man, but I did not realize that. And the, it's just strange. Like Darius McCrary, Bobby Brown. Why? Why? 
I just, I don't know. I mean, nothing against my brothers. Like, I mean, but it's just a wide range. There's like no type. There's no, there's no end game. And then after reading that book and hearing some of the stories that Gene Deal was speaking on. Right. Some of that shit true. Wait, which 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 line of stories are we talking from Gene? Uh story of he was talking about towels. He walked in and people was like, oh, uh, and ro- rolling and Diddy. <laughs> oh my God! Uh, I'm just gonna say I'm just gonna say allegedly. All of this stuff makes sense now if you think about it. And I want to get to the Kamala Harris discussion, and I want to move into the, the yeah, the, no the doubt, no Portage, doubt. Portage County, Ohio stuff, even though it's yeah, more, no more local for me, more national for you, and nonetheless. It, it kind of it'll bring in some some personal anecdotal connection to us both, but let's just let's finish this one out. All right, so Bobby Valentino, the Jamie Fox rumors. You know, recently Jag was on the Blue Couch. Shout out to the Blue Couch guys. Uh, Real streets, what's it called? Real life street stars. Yeah, shout, shout out real life street stars. Shout out Jaguar, right? She brought up at the Jamie Jamie Foxx's parties. Allegedly, midnight became the witching hour, and there was a game that was played where someone may have been making out with another individual, only to find out they weren't quite the gender that was being presented or represented. Now, how you don't find out, depending on when you start the make-out session, or even before you start making out, how you don't find that out, I'm really not trying to discover, per se, unless we could have a conversation with someone that was at any of those parties, you know. But interestingly enough, um, Mr. C being caught several times, uh, rest in peace in his vehicle in New York State with transgender uh, streetwalkers, professional women slash men, uh, red light specials, no disrespect to their humanity, just just using colloquial terms. But, you know, it, it, interestingly enough, the videos where they're saying that what was that video? Did he did he basically the song he was he was in the video with Big? I love it when you call me Big Pop. Uh, yeah, uh, that was allegedly not a woman through that entire video. Have you you, you familiar? No. Uh. Uh-uh. Even when you flash back to it and watch it again, you'll be like, "Oh, how did I miss that?" There's this supposed to be a woman throughout the entire video going between scenes with the main actors and performers of the song in in the video and there's a scene where she has to use the restroom and the security guard lets her into the men's restroom and there's a line of guys at the door and when the door opens to their chagrin and the surprise of the security guard, she's standing up at the urinal. Oh, I believe I know what you're talking about. Oh, you do. It's in your subconscious. Mm-hmm. We've seen that video. So mm-hmm. We all have, like, from our, our age, our era. Yeah. So when I saw it again recently, I'm like, whoa. Talk about in your face. But if you're not clocking for that, you're not checking for that, you're not checking for that. Right. In hindsight, which is always 2020, unless you go blind again, uh, it's right there. So all mm-hmm. these video, these I mean not videos, all these parties and these rumors of what goes on at the parties and what 
time everything shifts over. Some of the people I do believe they knew when to leave. Some people yeah. I believe found out the hard way, so they didn't leave when they were supposed to leave the first couple of times. But I think after the first time or two, if they continued to go to the parties, I mean, yeah, why would you not want to see like all of your favorite people that are doing what you do to get their money, whatever that is, on whatever level that is, because we know it's a mixed bag at those parties. But you, you, you're not going to, okay, let's be real. You're not going to stop going around who you're comfortable around. But at some point in time, you're going to start wondering if they left when you left because y'all didn't leave together because y'all didn't come together. And then you're going to wonder, really, is that your type of person at the end of the day, really? When, and, you know, let, let's say that that person was into substances. Once you start to withdraw from those substances, and I don't mean like going through withdrawal symptoms, but what that too, though. But once you start to remove yourself from that, that becomes not your thing anymore. You're going to start to remember things that you don't necessarily know that you remember you know what i mean right. uh, so i think some of them are telling the truth in other words but i definitely know that there are some of them that are lying like you brought the sun up at that bitch every time <laughs> we're playing yeah but too true some of those well i believe it was also said that some of those substances was put into them drinks unknowingly. Unknowing. So, yeah. Oh, but you know, I feel what you. I feel what you're saying. No doubt. No doubt. There's just so much to that, man. Uh, I'm gonna I'm get off of it because if I go down the road, I was about to. Uh, man, I mean, imagine you're the it guy or the it girl, and you don't know no better. You, you go to that party, you drink what you thought was your regular drink, whatever that normally is for you, and you wake up sporadically throughout the night to different people doing things to you. And the one drug is known to erase your short-term memory very effectively. But now when someone plays that video back to you or sends you the video to your phone from a private server, and then you're getting ready to do this movie that you already signed to do, and now you're no longer really the it guy except for in the eyes of the fans who don't know none of this shit. But it's like, you know what I'm saying? But now that's like your, um, that's your checkmate piece. That's your, what am I trying to say? That's what. That's what they got over your head. Yeah. And you're thinking to yourself, damn, where the hell is Olivia Benson Where I, when I need her? Where the hell is Sergeant Tutu Oleg? Man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I hope whoever is culpable and can be held culpable gets what's coming to them. That's all I can say. I, I don't wish... No bad on anyone. Now, if someone brought bad on themselves, and that's what they got coming to them. Uh, I hope, as the Canadians say, good on you. Good on you, man. Uh, oh, man, help us. Help us, creator, man. Whatever you believe in, man, it's time for you to get close to it. I don't care if it's a nine millimeter. Uh, <laughs> it's crazy these days, bro. But yeah. Um, interestingly enough, in Portage County, there's a sheriff, the, the elected sheriff, made some comments, and I'm going to paraphrase, I'm not going to even go into the showing of the article today for the instance of time, but he expressed what a lot of us feel and have thought inwardly, but in an elected official position, was not wise at all to express outwardly, especially in the presence of media. And what he said was that if Democrats in that area love Kamala Harris. Uh, Kamala Harris's immigration 
policies or performance at the border that they should start to direct those uh, people who have come over from other places to those who have her signs in support of her um, her electoral right race uh, so that they can house those people themselves. Uh, your thoughts? That was a bonehead. Uh, first off, if you're an elected, if you're a, if you have any elected position, regardless of what you feel, some things should probably be best kept to yourself. Mm -hmm. If you really feel that way and you want to get it out that bad, say it into a pillow. But not at a ditty party. I mean, listen, if that's if that's what you feel, we are a judge-free zone. Indeed. Unless you were at a ditty party and your face was in the pillow. Then it doesn't and there were minor and there were minors and there were yeah. minors and it was unconsensual. Un they're unconsensual, which is implied by the pillow. And Hey, yeah, uh, so because of this comment, the was it this was it the county board decided that a three to one vote took place, a vote took place three to one with the decision being that the sheriff's department could not provide the security detail at the local polls for Portage County uh, at the Board of Elections this year. So the police and I guess just the police, I don't know if they're going to employ private security in addition to police, but only local police, which is interesting because they're unionized. And of course, they have an opinion politically also, and, and it's probably a heavy one that's expressed via bumper stickers or signs in their yards and their boosters yards. I mean, it's just there's a lot to really unpack with this, but I know we're not going to probably go that deep today uh if ever but hey you be the, you be the judge you think that that vote um was was uh necessary do you think that this is something that should have went down that way i mean he expressed an unpopular opinion um believe it or not ohio is usually a red state but this particular county was unanimous, three to one, with one red vote, they said, uh, against them removing the sheriffs, which are usually a neutral party and technically the only law enforcement body, uh, no matter what area you're in in this country. They're actual law enforcement. Uh, troopers are paramilitary organization and police are enforcers of municipal codes, ordinances, and uh, policies not saying that you shouldn't follow those once again uh just saying that's the difference so now you're going to actually remove lawmen and women from providing security for the public because uh their leader who was elected by the people not by them as his uh deputies um just interesting you know what i mean i i think about all those things maybe it doesn't really matter to anyone else but i thought it was noteworthy and interestingly enough to uh to bring the light what do you think <laughs> it's fucked is what it is bro i mean well let's take it back a little bit like the reason why he said them things or those statements is because of the whole issue and the statement that was brought up in the debate about the whole cat eating situation, which I believe wasn't true anyway, but yet and still, I, again, if you really feel that way, some things should not be said. But to your point, going back a little bit from what you said, um, ever since the brother, the dude with the red hat went up for election. I mean, 
it's not even just signs that tell you that you're voting for him. You know what I'm saying? Mm. This the it's the red hat. <clears throat> Any type of sign that that kind of resembles anything leaning towards anything that he has said or represented already lets you know that that's who you rocking with. You know what I'm saying? Mm. You don't have to, you don't have to say it. You know what I'm saying? That already lets you know that that's who you're rocking with. So that lets you know what side of the fence you're on right or left. Again, Mm -hmm. Regardless of if the right or the left, it's the same bird, bro. Facts. You know what I'm saying? But I say that to say, even still, it's his opinion. Opinions are like voices. We all have different ones. And opinions are like assholes. Everybody has one. You know what I'm saying? It's just that. Now, again, being that he is an elected official, it doesn't reflect well. But does that mean that he's not going to do his job? No. Yeah, no. Does not, that does not mean that. I mean, there are a lot of things that you and I could say that's just an opinion. That doesn't mean we're going to go act on it. There are a lot of things that we say on here that's just an alleged opinion. Are we going to act on it? Fuck no. You know what I'm saying? But to take away the protection of the citizens, that could lead to an absolute, God forbid, disaster. You know what I'm saying? Indeed. So I don't think that's a wise decision for them to do. No, I don't. I don't agree with that at all. I, I don't either. I mean, it's not like there isn't going to be bias from any other group, like I, I've already named. So I'm not going to rename them because I don't right. want to place any particular perceived emphasis on one or another. Right. Now, you did bring up a, a good, interesting point. Uh, the the reasoning behind his statement. Uh, I don't think it was just Springfield. Um. And, and I will say this just so that when it comes out, you can say you heard it here first because there's a lot of you that you're hearing it here first anyway, and you're saying it like you came up with it, and we're smaller than you right now in numbers, but we coming for you, bitch. Anyhow, um, what I'm going to say is, what I'm going to say is, Trump misquoted two things that he wasn't lying about at all in that debate. And unfortunately, blame it on age, blame it on slip of the mind in the moment, the pressure, the angst that he was feeling because of the agitant that stood across from him at the podium, because she would agitate me. The sound of her voice is just aggravating. And it's it's it is specifically her. So don't take it like, you know, to a whole nother level, you know, whoever. Uh, Yeah, I don't have anything against female politicians. I have no problem with the concept of a lady running the country, um, but just not her. Please, please, Tom. not her or Hillary Clinton, please. Okay, so anyhow, um, he said dogs and cats, and then he added another word, so it was like doubling down, pets. That's not what, what was being reported, and that is not still the videos that are continuing to come out from the people from that town which is, by the way, probably about an hour and a half from where I am currently and currently reside. Wouldn't be hard to find out. Um, When you bring in 15 to 20,000 people from a third world country that knows it's a third world country to a country that perceives itself to be a first world country, but has been a third world country for over 200 years now and still been miseducated on the fact that it's not a third world country because it is a third world country and they see customs like killing wildlife to survive because even though you've been told that these people were given all of this money to come over here we haven't seen any evidence of that that i will say and that's not in defense of the blue party because once again we're still talking about two wings of the same bird as my partner stated but what i will say is we ain't seen no evidence of the money that they was given okay 
but we have seen evidence of ducks with their heads chopped off and geese with their heads chopped off. We've seen evidence of that, some of us. Uh, and geese and cats, which are often used in other people's cuisine that we go and order from buffets and from local corner store market type uh, setup shops. I mean, I don't see why that's so strange for people to wrap their head around. And it's not racially motivated. It's in fact like the first two people that you ever saw in a video talking about that phenomenon uh, or issue is cultural. It's a cultural problem when you flood an area with that many people from a whole different culture. Now we see what happened with Aurora. Now that's a whole different level. It's not wildlife that's at danger. It's actual American citizens, people who've already been established citizenship and residency and all of that. And all of a sudden now two particular apartment complexes owned by the same company whose landlords are in California have been overrun by a gang from another country. Now, I don't know how that makes the guy in the red hat look like the bad guy for stating the obvious. In fact, when he told you a few years ago that this was going to happen, it would kind of should make him look like a prophet, not to be overly religious or zealous and no, I'm not worshiping him whatsoever because that's not who I'm probably going to cast my ballot for, even though I like him as a businessman and a TV personality. Uh, and, and, and even though I enjoyed less stress while he was president financially, I don't know that he's the route that we should take either. Likely we won't pick the right route because we don't have a track record of doing so. Uh, but there is a lady who's a part of a party that begins with an L. That's not really a part of that bird or that system of thinking. Maybe you guys should look into her. She recently had a, a conversation on The Breakfast Club where she caused a, a young lady named Angela Rye to become a bit unhinged <laughs> and try to attack her personally on some pettiness. But yeah, look into that lady, man. Jill Stein, look into her. Uh, Shit, consider Cornell West, even though, you know, most of us don't want to become communist. That's why we don't want Kamala Harris to be president, but she kind of already is. Um, Man, I'm kind of going on and on, but listen, man, uh, you got me on one, bro. You got me on one. Um, I'm just saying, guys, look into these things for yourself. Um, stop being programmed. Like, I'm not saying that the immigrants in Springfield definitely did eat these creatures. But I am saying that there is a lot of evidence that states people stating that they witnessed that president didn't make this up because he's a hateful, spiteful individual. Uh, was it ill advised to use that that soon without vetted information in a debate? Absolutely. Did he slip at the tongue? And say dogs and cats instead of ducks. Yeah, he did. He said that. I heard him. I saw it. You're right. Um, what he also did was he misstated West Virginia's governor when it should have been, or senator. Wait, no, governor. Governor. And it should have been Virginia's governor that proposed a, a abortion bill where there'd be no term limits. Um, and was basically discussing it in the house in Virginia. Uh, there was a woman, uh, her last name is Lee. Um, she's an Asian American uh, person, but she proposed the bill. She in fact helped write the bill. And when they kept trying to get a straight answer for her on term limits, she evaded the question until they finally cornered her with a direct yes or no. Um, and that video is available as well. I mean, it's, not doctored. This is all like public record. So that's what he was referring to was that just like they were saying, he's going to pass a, a ban on abortion when he's never stated that. Um, even though Kamala Harris has never stated that she was going to remove term limits and reinstate abortion, they're both dealing with conjecture. So we got to kind of be fair if we're going to be logical adults. Um, there's deception and then there's the slip of a tongue, right? Um, 
but a person's trying to have recall in front of that many people, you're bound to make an error in statement. Uh, and I'm not excusing either side for any deception. We may come to find out that either of them were practicing, but we know for sure that the lady who represents the blue, she definitely evaded answering any direct questions. They avoided fact-checking her during the entire debate. That should disturb you, at least if you're an ABC News watcher, which I'm not, but, you know. I have, a, I have a family history with that channel. I'll, I'll maybe write it in a book one day. My dad used to work for the local affiliate for that particular network. So I don't high, hold them in very high regard, even though I do did used to love watching Wide World of Sports on that network <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> Ali was my guy, even though I didn't grow up watching Ali because I was too young to have grown up watching him. I kind of got a second chance with ABC in that regard. So I thank y'all for that. But, you know, quit messing with our elections. That's all I got to say. Man, honestly, before you uh, take anything that you see on any news channel, especially news channel for gospel and anything, yeah, make sure that you get your facts straight first. You know what I'm saying? Because, again, especially something that's sensational you know what i'm saying because oh, yeah. after after that comment i got some type of alert on my phone saying that the whole cat thing no it was they said no it, it wasn't in springfield it was in canton word oh, okay mm -hmm. so i mean yeah i got a i legit got an alert on my phone saying it said fact check the cat eating incident was in canton ohio not springfield okay. so and I don't even know if that was true. So, right. I mean, you legit got to go really deep into all of that to see. And that could just be some type of BS witch hunt for you just to see how deep you're going to go into something because it's just clickbait. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, make sure that you know exactly, not know exactly, but go make sure it's an actual reputable source that you're checking into. You know what I'm saying? Someone who is really unbiased. I got to fact check uh, myself. It was Kathy Tran that proposed that bill. Sorry. It wasn't. No, doubt. It was no doubt. But if you're going to like really check a news source and this isn't a plug or anything, but I would recommend NPR because they're very unbiased when it comes to news stuff. You know what I'm saying? Just saying. But yeah. Reuters yes. used to be unbiased. There's alleged bias in Reuters now, but as a former member of the the media uh, in the 90s, more specifically, Reuters was the only news source. And it came straight out of the pipeline from Germany. And every other media source would edit the Reuters news to suit their market demographic. I don't know when that changed, but I left radio in 1999. So that's 25 years ago. So it could have changed at any point in between. I don't, I don't, you know, dispute that whatsoever. I just remember what used to be unbiased, and it was the only unbiased because it was the only one that wasn't marketed or aimed at one specific market. You know, they were just telling you what was reported by the sources that were most closely involved or uh, witnessed said events uh statements whatever it was and then your market you had a news director and if you were a news writer the news director could assign you to that story or they could rewrite it for the local uh channel affiliate or network affiliate uh on their own you know what i mean but it's crazy how much things have changed um i just wanted to show this bill real quick i know we weren't really supposed to discuss this but the bill summary, I'm going to just read this. If you can see it, cool. Um, see if I can pull it up this way and read it. Yeah. So the bill summary, and this was from 2019, by the way. So he was talking about things that have been proposed. And I think it was taken completely out of context, of course, in, with intent. But abortion eliminates certain requirements. Eliminates the requirement that an abortion 
in the second trimester of pregnancy and prior to the third trimester be performed in a hospital. The bill eliminates all the procedures and processes, including the performance of an ultrasound required to affect a woman's informed written consent to the performance of an abortion. However, the bill does not change the requirement that a woman's informed written consent be first obtained. The bill eliminates the requirement that two or other physicians certify that a third trimester abortion is necessary to prevent the woman's death or impairment of her mental or physical health, as well as the need to find that any such impairment to the woman's health would be substantial and irremediable. The bill also removes language classifying the facilities that perform five or more first trimester abortions per month as hospitals for the purpose of complying with regulations establishing minimum standards for hospitals. It said this bill eliminates several requirements related to abortion in Virginia specifically. It removes the requirement that the second trimester abortions be performed in a hospital it removes the procedures and processes required for informed written consent and eliminates the need for two or other physicians to certify that a third trimester abortion is necessary to prevent. I just read that part in the other part of the, the summary. OK, the other summary. So additionally, the bill removes language that classifies facilities performing five or more first trimester abortions per month as hospitals for the purpose of complying with hospital regulations. And it tells you who sponsored the bill. And the number one name is Kathy Tran. You know, Hala Ayala, I might be saying that wrong. Jennifer Carol Foy, Lee Carter. But these are all the Democrats. As you can see, D is before all of their names. That proposed this bill. And there's more to the bill than just that. But that's all I care to share at this time. But that's what Trump was referring to. Shout out to Dan Calloway for pointing that out uh, for your audience. As I am one of the members of your audience as well. Uh, but great work to at least bring some fairness to the fact, Jack, after the fact. <laughs> That's what he was talking about, y'all. He didn't make that shit up. He didn't pull it out of his ass, uh, so to speak, and he wasn't trying to uh, misframe Miss Kamala's past expression of support of said bill. So hopefully y'all will make your best uh, informed choice since some of you are hell-bent on uh, casting a ballot. Um, what you think, man? CSS certified shit show. Yeah, buddy. So who's trying to kill Mr. Trump, man? Who's who is doing that? Who's doing that shit, man? Or is it even really a thing? Is that not really a thing? You think? I thought it was bullshit, but I know that second one. It was some old white dude. For real, little old white dude, they arrested. I mean, the dude was connected to some stuff in the Ukraine, some pretty heavy stuff. He had been arrested twice for having the possession and ownership of weapons of mass destruction. It was only mass destruction because he wasn't holding the shit right. He didn't know what the fuck he was doing. I'm talking about prior. There's yeah, priors. Did you did you read about the priors or hear about the priors? The only prior I know is Richard. I knew you were gonna say that. I said <laughs> I left that wide open. <laughs> Look, man, dude had a history, bro, of being bout it about it. Like he went to Ukraine and was trying to recruit Afghanis that have been released from the Taliban to come over there and help the Ukrainians fight Russia. Like, dude's bout it about it, bro. What? He's more certified than the little young dude that got five shots off before they blew his brains out uh, in in Pennsylvania. Uh, shit is wild, bro. Wild. I'm just saying it's so interesting. No one from the other wing of the bird is being implicated, at least openly. We got Diddy charges. We got World War III pretty much going on, being downplayed. We got genocide being performed. Only one country with the gonadotropians, as my dude T would say, to call them out on it in a world court 
Uh, yeah, it's a certified shit show, all right. But we're seeing a lot of power grabs right now. I hope y'all are paying attention. And try to remember all of this when they try to pit you against your neighbor. Yeah. And I'm telling you, how are we going to figure out who's behind all this? You got to quote the great James Carter. And I'm not talking about the president. I'm talking about Chris Tucker's character from Rush Hour 2. Follow the rich white man. Mm. Or woman. Allegedly. Or people. And they ain't always white either. Just just that's that's another episode, but that part. Oftentimes the biggest face of white supremacy is a black one. Or, or in the words of Lester Freeman from the wire, follow say, the money. Follow, follow the money. Indeed. Follow the money. All the money. Indeed. Well, y'all, it's been another Deeper Dives Dialogue Unlimited Podcast. We thank you for your support, for your viewership. And, yo, check us out on Rumble.com also, Deeper Dives Dialogue Unlimited channel. You can subscribe. You can like. You can share. You can join our locals and donate. Donate, donate. The bigger, bigger budget we might have access to, of course, the better quality uh, aesthetics that we can bring to you. Um, we want to look our best, sound our best, and bring our best information forward for you. But for now, it's been real. It's been fun. It's been real fun. Like my man said, don't hate, donate. There you go. We appreciate y'all. And we out until next time.